Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 5. Today we're going to be doing my final Season 5 video. Well, I'll have an ending breakdown video out later today, but this is my final actual review of the season, and wow, what an episode. An amazing finale, super excited to talk about it in this video with you guys, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so just big announcement in this video, going to be going to San Diego Comic Con this year, super excited, also I'll be at the Ultimates this week, and also MCM London Comic Con, but San Diego Comic Con I'm going to be there with Pagey and Eric's Reloaded, super excited, get ready for that. Also I'm going to be doing some giveaways in regards to who helps me out, so please be sure to check into some live streams because I'm going to be doing giveaways for some San Diego Comic Con exclusive Funko Pops and lots of other things. So please be sure to check into those live streams because I'm going to start doing them a bit more as we head towards then. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this review because we have a lot to talk about. So we start basically where we ended last episode, the penultimate episode, and we have this voiceover narration by Nora, and everything's in slow motion as they are about to destroy the dagger, but you see Ralph, he jumps in the way, he gets hit, the dagger actually hits him from behind, and basically he gets all fucked up, like, he's all mangled and horrible, and it's kind of disgusting, and... So, they are all confused for, like, the first maybe 10 minutes of the episode, why did he do this? Because he is all mangled up, he can't talk or anything, and so it's revealed, obviously, what's happening, and Sherlock explains to them, this was part of Reverse Flash's plan, to get Nora to come back in time, to destroy the dagger so he can escape, and it's been all very personal, although he still has that connection, he later says in the episode something to do with that. We'll get to that later once we get to it. Okay, so we get this scene early in the episode with Cisco and his girlfriend Camilla, who, yeah, I've not been such a big fan, but I thought she was a nice addition in this episode. I thought she was kind of just cute with Cisco. I thought it kind of worked, and the scene was definitely a teaser for what's happening in the ending of this episode, and we'll get to that when we do. But Barry and Nora have this chat, and Barry gives her the live with the consequences speech. And what type of hero is she going to be? What is she going to be remembered for? Are you going to be the one that makes a mistake and goes back and does, say, Flashpoint? And that's definitely what he was referencing to every time. The fact that, you know, Barry's changed and Barry doesn't make those mistakes anymore like he did in those past seasons with time travel. He was very brash. He was very much so like Nora. And this season, Nora's arc has been very much so parallel to Barry's mistakes of the past. Past. So I really like that moment and it pays into what happens later. So we move on and we sort of finish up with the Cicada storyline. I think Cicada was definitely the weakest part of this episode. I thought she was just okay. Like I don't think she's that good. And young Grace is saved by Nora inside her mindscape. They go to her place and Cicada is eventually erased from the timeline as her younger version takes the cure and the dagger is destroyed and therefore Cicada's now gone, she's finished. It was a satisfying conclusion to her, but I don't think she was that much of an interesting character, so I didn't really feel like any emotion really. I was just like, yeah, it's a pretty cool scene. And But this plays into what happens next. Reverse Flash steals the episode. Holy shit, Tom Cavanaugh is so good. I love the addition of him this season, and this episode, man, did he shine. He was amazing. And so... Let's talk about all this reverse slash stuff because I've got a whole list, like a long list to go through because there is so much in this episode, just a few lines every now and again that tease what's to come later in the episode but later in next season and everything that's happening. So with the dagger disappearing, he is set free and it's at that moment that he does the zoom thing. He smiles, he phases out, all the lightning's coming in, the red lightning, you see it and I was just so happy. I was just smiling my face off. My cheeks were hurting because you were like, oh shit, he's gonna do it. So he does the zoom scene back in season two, what zoom did in when they were doing that scene in the CC jitters and he kills all the people. And so it freezes and he says, I hate to inform you, but you're all dead. He goes around, bang, they all drop to the ground slow motion. What a scene. I just think that's such a great way to 
actually pay homage to what Zoom did, but also to set Reverse Flash free and sort of lead into Crisis and how he's going to escape. So he tortures the main prison guard and phases his hand through his chest, so kind of some poetic justice. But it's at that point that time reverses, he puts out the reverse flash ring, you see the suit. For a second I was like, huh? Is my... Is, is the TV show glitching? Like, what the hell is happening? Why is this happening right now? But then, you see it goes back, reverses in time, and you see that Nora and Barry turn up and they save everyone there, so they didn't die. And it's when Nora and Barry confront Thorn and they say, we figured out everything. So this is the second time he's been stuck somewhere for 15 years so we got the official confirmation he's been in this prison for 15 years that's a long time and it's very kind of obviously a wink and a nod to season one and how he went back to that night reverse flash killed Barry's mum then he's stuck for 15 years he has to create the flash so he can become reverse flash again he can escape go back to the future and so on so it's a cyclical nature of the story of reverse flash and so it's kind of fitting that he was there for 15 years and then he escapes with the help of actually an Allen family member so that's very funny and very good and I really liked how that ended well sort of started this sort of conflict in this episode between reverse flash and team flash so he explains how team flash mainly Barry and Nora in the 100th episode when they went back in time they saw reverse flash they talked to him about how can you create this thing I don't really remember what it was but it was some sort of device to stop cicada's dagger and so he says you help me escape and mentioning cicada in the past he knew that he had to get Nora's trust at that moment he was like I am remembering her because Cicada is the one that got away so therefore he could infer he didn't get away so he's going to have that in his back pocket the whole time and that's what he's been planning this for many years and so just like he, what he did with Barry he took Nora's trust and he manipulated her and it worked successfully so very similar to season one and he goes on to say I am the only speedster who knows how to manipulate the timeline and get what I want and this goes on as he says orchestrate the changes that I need some of which are happening right now to ensure I go free and this pays off by the end of the episode and we'll get to that in just a second but the idea that they tease this sort of mm, kind of near the end of the episode but sort of just past the midway point is that yeah the timeline is definitely changing with obviously them destroying the dagger and the younger version of Grace taking the cure so she can never do this in the future and so the timeline is shifting and altering in a weird way that very much so affects Reverse Flash and actually helps him because he's orchestrated it as he said and things are happening that will ensure he goes free and we'll get to that just in a sec so he says you can't save Nora no matter what you do the Flash will always vanish. That is his legacy, and so this is when he's back in present day. We have the whole team, we have this amazing fight, and so he welcomes and sort of says hi to Team Flash. And it was just such a priceless moment. He goes, Ralph Dibney, welcome. You should be dead. That was such a great line, because if you remember back to Season 1, Ralph was actually on the list of the people who was killed in the Particle Accelerator explosion, so you can infer the timeline's changed, and this version of Ralph survived due to Flashpoint, I guess. And he says, Iris, always a pleasure. Cisco, warms my heart to see you again. I want to apologize for the... And then he does the phasing hand action. Love it. Love it. Classic reverse flash. Amazing scene. And so we follow on with this amazing fight. And they all combine their powers. Cisco is doing some amazing stuff. They're all working together. And then Barry and Nora chase through the portal and knock him out and they basically all confront him and it's at the point that Nora goes in for the kill she's literally about to kill him she very much so is turning into the reverse flash that the new timeline sets in with the dagger being destroyed you created this new timeline and he says I'm sorry little runner for trading you in like this and so the timeline is changing so he definitely molded it in a way so he could escape for leverage therefore you know what he did, he's manipulated it so that Nora will get erased and that will be his insurance to escape. And he reveals how Barry and Nora can save Nora and it's to run into the negative speed force and stay in there 
and that's the way to escape the timeline changes. And then he says, or we lose her. We. And he says, yes, I've grown fond of her. And that was the moment where I was like, oh, that must sting for Barry. And I really felt that moment. And it's at that point that Barry and Nora run off to try and go into the negative speed force. And it's very, very important you realize Barry actually ran into the negative speed force that's never happened before so I think they may bring that back sometime soon Thorne then says see you in our next crisis and I got chills I was like oh boy you coming back for crisis on infinite earths I know what you're talking about I love that that was such a great line maybe the best line of the episode for sure and so reverse flash smiles and he runs away it is a classic reverse flash moment and just such a good way to tease Crisis and what's to come, which also leads into the ending of the episode, which we'll get to in a second. I know I keep on teasing it, but I'm going chronologically this episode because there is so much to talk about and we need to freak out about all of this. So Nora begins to get erased as she attacks reverse flash and just prior to that, he said, so close little runner, it was never going to work anyway. So you can infer from that that he's known this whole time that saving Barry, saving her dad, was destiny essentially. So they run into the negative speed force, she can't do it, she doesn't want to live and be like Thorne being engulfed by the negative speed force in the comics. You know what happens in the negative speed force when Barry goes, it tries to eat him up, he becomes completely consumed. And if Nora stayed in there, she would be a completely different version, maybe a villain when she returned. And so Barry and Iris freak the fuck out. And this was such an intense and amazing scene. Massive, massive props to Candace Patton and Grant Gustin and Jessica Parker Kennedy for this scene. They kill it especially Candace Patton. She is destroyed and you really feel it and it's such a sad moment and Nora gets erased and they all hug and it's such a beautifully heartbreaking end and as you know, I love Nora. I think Nora was the best thing about the season along with Reverse Flash. She was so good and I thought this was a very fitting way. We obviously had the idea that this was probably going to happen with all the timeline changes and everything but it really worked. It was a great end to her character and I reckon she may come back because Joe drops this line We have to believe we'll see her again and I think we will in crisis. That's my theory Maybe I'll do some videos over the summer in regards to is Nora going to return in crisis because they tease it and Sherlock leaves so this was a moment where I actually teared up like I didn't realize but it's been quite a journey is what he says it was so sad touching and just a nice happy ending that he gets that happy ending and what a Harrison Wells guys I have to say massive fan of him I think definitely obviously Harry is my favorite and um, reverse flash doesn't really count because he's not a real Harrison Wells so Harry and I love what we got with Sherlock this season and HR was very good but I think Sherlock is getting there, but I think Harry's just still my favourite, but I really felt for this moment so you can see the impact he's had on me, and I think he's had an impact on a lot of you guys, so, you know, a great addition, I would love to see him back very soon. So, it was at this point that Joe gets an upgrade, he's the captain, and Captain Singh, he becomes the commissioner, like Commissioner Gordon, and... He knows who Barry is. That was a really just kind of a nice moment. I like that when he revealed and Iris finds Nora's journal and it hasn't been erased. So I'm not sure as to the specifics if that makes sense or not. If that didn't get erased because you know she drew on it and everything but we'll have to wait and see. But it was just a really nice moment as we see Iris crying once more and you can really tell that she's going to be affected going into season 6 and going into crisis because this has been Nora's journey. And, you know, she got erased whilst Iris was actually holding her. So I think it's going to be a big impact on to next season. And so we move on later into the episode and we get the official leave of Cisco Ramon played by Carlos Valdez. So, you know, Cisco is one of my favorite characters. And this was a very touching and sad moment between two amazing friends, that being Caitlin and Cisco. It was a very fitting end and I thought they did great justice to the ending of his character, although I think this season of The Flash, although I love this season, I think it's a great season, I don't think they did that much with Cisco, apart from this last episode where I really thought it worked, so I'm a little bit sad that he didn't leave on a sort of better storyline for the season, but you know, he takes the Metacure, he's not Vibe anymore, so 
he's not really going to be that hero. So that's probably the last time, unless we see a doppelganger of him, that we're going to see him in quite a while. And I think, obviously, it's going to be a whole next season with Cisco gone. And I think, you know, it's going to have a similar impact to how what happened when Wynn left this season from Supergirl. And there's obviously a massive gap that's going to be missing. And so... Barry and Iris, they talk about Nora, and they're in the time vault, and they talk about how it should feel like a loss, but instead, they feel pride for their daughter, and it was a very, very touching moment. Once again, I find there's a lot of these touching moments in the episode. It was definitely one of the best episodes of the season, for sure, and so she was the best of both of us. She was my legacy all along. It wasn't about him. It wasn't about anything to do with that. It was Nora, who was Barry's legacy once he disappeared. So no matter what changes with the timeline, that won't change. And they find a USB, and so they're flicking through the diary, by the way. So that won't change, whatever was their history. They remember it. And so they play this USB, and it's Nora's final message for Barry and Iris. Again, tearing up over the scene. That is very reminiscent of the message we saw a few episodes ago. Maybe she was inspired by Barry's one from Crisis. And so this is her own sort of message for Barry and Iris. And Nora explains her plan and why she came back to meet her family, fix the Flash's legacy, which she didn't wasn't able to do because Reverse Flash said it was never going to happen. It is inevitable, essentially, that he's going to go down this path and disappear or whatever happens to him in Crisis and to fight Cicada. And she's glad it turned out like this. She wouldn't change it. She wouldn't go back in time or anything. So I thought it was a very touching sort of end to Nora's character and I reckon we might see her next season I think they definitely set it up and over the voice overlay we get a montage of the new chapters of these characters lives so we see Cisco with Camilla there's the flowers falling you know the spring flowers the blossom it's a very nice sort of end for Cisco I really kind of like that scene just a little segment and we see Captain Joe West as the captain and Sherlock on his Earth CC jitters the door opens by no, like no one's holding the handle or anything. We can infer this is obviously Renee, his new girlfriend. So he gets his happy ending. And then Killer Frost gets a new suit, which is super awesome. And Ralph sees the pseudonym of Sue Dibney from the comics. She's a massive thing. She's his love interest. And they're obviously going to set that up next season. So. Killer Frost is going to get a new suit. I think that's very interesting. I think she definitely deserves a new suit. Her season 3 suit is the best. Like, why don't they go back to that? I think that's the best suit. So, I don't know. But Barry needs a new suit. That's for sure. That's the one thing about the season. Not a very good suit. You need the chin strap and you need to figure out the suit. So, it's not like a helmet. I think it needs an actual cow. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. So, Nora, thanks them for everything and it's so sad Barry and Iris cry and so do I so we fade to black in a very slow way and this is where we head towards the end of the episode and it's at that moment that we go back to the time vault where we just were we see Gideon and she says incoming time flux therefore we can infer timeline changes that is what's happened this whole episode you know Cicada gets erased and then we get the eration of Nora because they destroyed the dagger and reverse flash has manipulated the timeline for his own needs and he needed a way to escape and the way to escape was to essentially put Nora in this situation where she's going to get a race and so it's his leverage and he gets away and he says till the next crisis and this next crisis is teased in this ending with the 2024 crisis on infinite earths article as we know now switches dates down from 2024 to 2019 so we all knew this was happening but it's finally coming and i'm super excited although i have to say this i was kind of hoping for a season six flash villain tease i was hoping for maybe like a red death tease because i really think they need to speed the villain next season they need mystery and that will get people and fans excited again i think this was a great finale to get fans excited for crisis but i don't think there's that much obviously tease for season six of the flash not just crisis obviously crisis is going to be a big thing at the start of the season i think what they're going to do next season in terms of season six 
at the start, I reckon they won't introduce the villain. I think a big mistake of season four and five. Like, I really love season five, but I think the only weakness really is Cisco's story, like I said, but also Cicada being introduced so early because she and he just kind of dragged on this whole time. But apart from that, love the season. But I think they're going to learn from their mistakes and actually go for a focus on Crisis, have a few extra just episodes here and there. They will tease the villain and I think the villain will come into full sort of fluctuation, like full effect after Crisis and it will be sort of like a Savitar thing. But I think it's going to be Red Death. That's my theory because they teased it. They did that with DeVoe. So I reckon that's going to happen after Crisis. So I'm super excited for Comic Con. I'm going to be there when they release the trailer. I cannot wait. So let me know in the comments down below. Are you a fan of this episode? How did you like that ending? Are you super excited for Crisis on Infinite Earths? I know I am. And so please be sure to subscribe. Turn on notifications so you don't miss any videos over the summer. I'm going to be releasing an ending breakdown video later today talking about this ending and what it could mean going forward so it will be in more depth so thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you guys later goodbye